Welcome, guys. Welcome to Barrio Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. Thank you guys for stopping by. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna get ready. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, nice seeing you, Brenda. Welcome, Eric. I know it's late for you, but we appreciate you for joining in. Susie Q, thank you. Welcome, welcome. God's fancy girl, Brenda. Nice, 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 nice. I appreciate you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for joining us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We welcome you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I went to see the movie, okay? And you guys, you need to make plans to go and watch the movie. I'm aware that it's not in all the theaters, but like when you call, um, the more people buy the tickets in advance, the more they're going to have, um, the more they're going to show it uh, in theaters. Okay, the more they're going to show it uh, in theaters. Okay. Oh, I, it, that's fine, Susie, if dinner is about ready. Because <laughs> I'm usually at 9 p.m., which is actually like a good time, you know, but I'm like, okay, Saturday, you know, uh, we, we are at 8. That's okay. We appreciate you guys. So it's not showing international okay i think right now i think the movie they've just put it out uh in us okay so the movie's out in the us i'm sure eventually they're going you know they're gonna have it uh uh worldwide internationally then they're going to stream it but for now the movie just came out uh in theaters yesterday okay so i went to see the movie the movie is actually a very good movie i encourage you guys to definitely watch it okay so just to um <laughs> okay so just to wet your appetite okay let's watch uh this short clip right here here we go every no spoilers don't worry there will be no spoilers okay i want you guys to be able to go and enjoy the movie all right uh here we go the church says to every authoritarian government there is a power and authority higher than you. Our calling is not first to comply with your laws. We must obey God rather than men. Yep, so it came out yesterday in theaters, so you want to make sure you go and see the movie. Okay, so uh, what was my experience watching the movie? Uh, I, to be honest with you, I was surprised. It actually exceeded my expectations. I cried in the movie two times, and it just brought up memories that actually made me so... <laughs> kind of like angry and mad. <laughs> so that's what happened, okay? Th those were like the em emotions that I experienced um, when I watched the movie. It's definitely, I'm going to watch it again because I have one of my friends, she hasn't seen it and she wants to go, um, she wants to go and, and see the movie. So I'll definitely go uh, go again and go watch it with her. So, uh, you know, if, if you've watched the movie, put a yes in the movie. Uh, Type a yes that you've seen it. So don't worry, there'll be no spoilers, okay? I, I, I wouldn't want anybody to spoil the movie for me, so I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'm just sharing with you guys my experience. Number one, I think if you're a Christian, you need to watch the movie. And if you're not a Christian, you also need to watch the movie. It's that important. It's going to make you... Um, it's going to shift your thinking. It's going to change your thinking. It's going to uh, assess your commitment to what a church is. And it's going to affirm your, your commitment to, to what a church is. Okay. We know whenever during the lockdowns, like when everything else was, was going on, uh, you know, people didn't know uh, everything. People didn't know what to do, so to speak. But the way this movie, they, you know, the way they put out... Um, uh everything it's going to make you exercise grace it's going to make you uh sympathetic it's going to open your eyes in a different way now we understand that pastor john macarthur 
Grace Community Church, Big Church, the whole nine yards, right? The way they do things at that church on their elder board, it's beautiful. I mean, like, they open the curtain to see, like, you know, we're always curious, want to know what's going on at Grace Community Church. That movie, they, 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 <laughs> they did that for you, okay? They did that for you. I'm going to, uh, we're going to have uh, the director of the movie, um, Shannon Holliday, is going to be here on Monday. So we'll be able to ask him questions. You know what I'm saying? What, how did you guys come up with the movie? What went behind the scenes? You know, how did you guys, what about all this transparency? How are you going to put all this stuff to the whole world to see that type of thing? So it's going to be uh, uh, that interesting. So exactly informative and remember there's nothing new under the sun. Absolutely, literally nothing new under the sun. So the other thing also, uh, this is my main thing. There's people who canceled Pastor John MacArthur because uh, they shut down their church. I want people who canceled uh, Pastor MacArthur because of that specifically to go and watch this movie. When they see that movie, I'm telling you, you're going to be, you're going to be repenting in sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> you're going to be repenting in sackcloth and ashes. Because that movie is going to, I mean, like, it's showing you um, what, what, what happened. Okay. And then you'll be like, oh my goodness. So that's also another thing that I want uh, people to go and watch the movie. It's well produced, well directed. It's not um, high end production. You're actually going to feel proud. Like, okay, you know what? We're Christians here. Okay. So we got something going on. So definitely uh, make sure uh, you watch the movie. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, obviously the movie came, came out uh, yesterday. We went in theaters. I went with my husband. We actually met a couple that traveled all the way, like 45 minutes just to watch the movie. Because, you know, it's not in all um, in all the theaters. Okay? It's not in all the theaters. Yes. I mean, Brother Eric, that if to me, if somebody canceled Pastor MacArthur, I want you to go and watch that movie. And after you watch that movie, you're free. You, you want to have him canceled? So be it. But at least give him a chance just watch that movie and let me know if you still stand on this quote unquote the cancellation on pastor macarthur all right so uh here is another na uh, another nugget okay that i'll share with you guys okay uh they did a good job i can't wait to have uh the director so you know he can tell us the whole nine yards Okay, so uh, watch this a little bit. Uh, okay, let me get out on, on the thing so I'm not that way. It's just you guys enjoying, okay? Uh. All right, that's actually a very uh, good uh, uh, nugget clip that they had. I don't know why it didn't um, let me play that, but that's okay. I should be able to find uh, to find another one. Okay, so another thing that uh, to me that was so um, thank yes, you know, this idea that we have, like, okay, you know what, you know, Pastor MacArthur, right? Whatever he says at Grace Community Church, everything goes, right? Like, it's just like, okay, if, if, if he just says, okay, we are opening the open, we're shutting down, we're shutting down. Okay, you move over there, you do these things. That's not how things work at that particular church. They, they actually do have elders, 40 elders, and they, they, um, they're actually, um, how do I say it? They are not, they are not yes men. Okay. They are not yes men to Pastor MacArthur. Okay. They are not yes men to Pastor MacArthur. They have uh, an equal say. 
that's what the movie portrayed. Okay. So that's why I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Do you want all this information out? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So to me, that was kind of like, even kind of like encouraging, like, wow, you know, because I've heard people, like we say, like, you know what? He's very humble and he's just, you know, he, he he's a good man. But like, you know, for most people, just like, oh, you're just saying that because you are quote unquote MacArthurites, right? Because that's what uh, people always say. But Watch the movie and let me know if you're still hanging on on accusing people of being MacArthurites, whatever it is people say. Okay, here you go. So we are beginning to see persecution from government. This is the most formidable persecution. Nothing new. 1660, the Covenanters signed their national covenant with their blood to resist to the death the claims of the king, to override the crown rights of the Redeemer in his church, King Jesus. The government wanted to impress on people. Look what happens. Brown was betrayed. Margaret Wilson and her younger sister Agnes. They were known to be covenanting sympathizers. Difficult to know how many were actually executed. Why would you die? for church polity. Nice. So you gotta go watch that movie. It's going to make you, I, I, I can't even kind of like describe how it's going to make you almost kind of like, um, why didn't I know about these things? Okay. Cause there's so many things that we take for granted. It's not like you don't know certain things. You already know things, but we are so comfortable. We get so used and then we take things for granted. Okay. We take things for granted. So this movie is going to wake you up to stop taking things for granted, literally. So I do think like, okay, you know, the, these comforts that we're experiencing, it's almost kind of like, you know what? I think <sighs> too much comfort is, is, is creating all these problems that we're experiencing is what I'm trying to say. What are you saying? It should be church policy because for true pluralism of elders, not a hierarchy within pastor leadership. Absolutely. Yes, this is how it's supposed to be because that's what the scripture teaches. And this is what they practice at Grace Community Church, okay? They, you know, the elders are actually like elders. They're just not like in name only. So, yes, we get it that, okay, Pastor MacArthur is a, you know, kind of like the teaching pastor, like a better word, like a senior pastor. So if, if, if they're doing well, he gets the credit. If they're not, he gets whatsoever. But some of the things that have actually... Um, the things that he that, that have fallen, him being accused of, he literally had he was actually um uh, kind of like kind of like the innocent one, so to speak, right? But it's just like, no, you know what I'm saying? They are united, so when they fall, they all fall together. When they rise, they rise together. Outside looking in, all we are seeing is kind of like um 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 and, and John MacArthur. So when all this thing was happening, okay. These people were taken to court. Uh, you know, they are they were fighting the government left and right. It, it was chaos. It was crazy. We didn't see because we're just out here like, okay, you know, J Mark has shut down the church. J Mark has shut down the church. And, you know, this is what we do, right? It's easier. You're outside looking in, just, you know, um, saying, okay, you should have done this or you should, you should have done it this particular way. 
Now, the other thing also to me that this movie kind of like revealed was like, you know, a church unity. We understand we say that we are a local church and then there's a universal Catholic church. I've, that movie opened my eyes. Like, you know, we say those things in name only, but we don't mean it like in practice. Why? Because we are so scared of uh, this ecumenical, okay? And in this context, I'm not even talking about the 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 Rick Warren, the Benny Hinn, the Foster. We uh, that's that's not even those, those are out there. I'm talking about solid biblical churches and pastors. There's gotta be a a after watching this movie. To be honest with you, it's going to make people wake up to a point where, like, you know what? I might not be going to the same church like you do. You are my sister in Christ, not just like in words only, but it's like, you know what? Let's just say they're coming for, for the church or at the corner, right? They can come for that church. Guess what? This The other church is going to be open. And then these people are going to go over there and worship. Why? Because we, we are united. We are, we are not going to Jehovah's Witness. We are not going to the moment. We are talking about churches that we, we agree in the core essential things. Even on that level, we're sort of like, kind of like not united. Those are the things that I have seen. And uh, I know, I, you know what, Brother Erica, I actually thought, I'm like, you know what? I wonder if RSC's Pro is around. I read that. That's also what came to mind. Now, another thing also that's kind of like, even for me, that kind of like convicted me is this thing, okay? Uh when you like you know my background are you you know i come i was a seven day adventist okay i was seven day adventist you know you can lose your salvation so sleep you gotta keep the sabbath you're gonna lose it, the whole nine years so my default position when it comes to theology my tenors are always there. ah <laughs> okay so if, if i'm listening to something i'm looking something I, it's already going through a filter of, you know, <laughs> is it sound? Is it solid? Is it heretical? Is it whatsoever? Because of where I'm coming from, okay? Because I was just like, okay, no. I've been I in a false teaching, all those things. Those, that's where I'm from. So when... <laughs> I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist, okay? So um, now... Because I operate from that type of framework, you know what I'm saying? I don't make an apology for the things that I know that are true, theologically speaking. But, you know, as they say, knowledge puffs up. And especially like, you know, in a kind of like when you're reformed, everything already, you know, your default position is always filtering things through those lenses. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think we, we go to the extra mile, okay? So now... Why was I convicted uh, watching the movie? Okay. I, um, when, you know, whenever there was this about whatever, the lockdowns and everything, to me, you know what I mean? I was like, I didn't think that we should we should be even having the, 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 the subject, okay? Because I already understood that the, the government cannot tell the church what to do under no circumstances, especially dictating the affairs of the church, because that falls under the ecclesiology, right? So if the government is telling you, you cannot sing, you cannot gather, uh, you cannot pass offerings and everything, I was just like, they can't, okay? I was already saying that before the shutdown. And I was like, even, you don't even have to be a Christian, right? America, right? Like, you know, freedom of religion. So I was like, okay, so already you have, just on the freedom of religion alone, you know, you better know you're infringing upon um, our freedoms. That's it. We, we don't even have to go any further. And then I was like, okay, you know what? Even if it comes to a point where, like, you know, people decide to close the church and everything, it should be, you know, the elders, they should make that decision, not influenced by outside. But even I was just like, you know, even the elders, because the church belongs to Christ. So the, the church does, they have to be open. If people come, they come. If they don't come, they don't come. So, you know, that was my, my disposition from the get-go from the beginning. So when I saw that the churches were, you know, they are closed and everything, I was like, I mean, to me, I was like, wait a minute. So 
people we say ecclesiology people don't understand ecclesiology people don't understand that there's a government there's a church there's a family all those particular things like i was just like oh what's going on over here right but uh you know we there's discernment is a gift okay there are certain things that other people know theologically that you also don't know so like remembering that thing to me this movie uh, brought those things back like okay you know what other people might not be seeing what you're actually seeing okay and like you know for most people it's not like you know they're just brushing it aside like you know they're also kind of like wrestling with the scriptures so you know learn to be giving people grace is is what this movie has has kind of shown me and the other thing to me that also kind of in i mean i mean i mean nobody and everything right i was just like man I, I almost kind of wish, uh, this is me, my, my selfish violin, right? I was like, you know what? I kind of wish like, you know, uh, uh, Pastor MacArthur had just been like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, because there was a division as far as the church is concerned, right? Some members wanted um, the church board was split. Some was voting for to open. Some was voting to close. You know what I mean? He had the same position from the get-go. Like, no, you know, the church shouldn't be closed. We should be opening you know so there were some things that, that were going on over there for one reason or the other that's why you need to watch the movie and to find that out because i cannot tell you right now okay but my selfish me i was just like so but it, personally i'm so happy that the movie's out uh almost kind of like it it's going to tie a bow that type of vindication for uh uh for, for pastor macarthur so that I was, I was happy for him. He's 83 years old. Okay. This movie is kind of like, um, a gift, so to speak. And by the way, it's not about him. That's also the, the other thing. Okay. He's featured in the movie, but they, they, there's a big story around the movie. Okay. So I did appreciate that. And for me, it's almost kind of like, you know, when we always say things about people when they are when they die oh he was this he was whatever but the fact that he's 83 years old he was able to see that movie you know and then just seeing everything i was i was i was kind of uh, i'm happy for him and i really want other people especially pastors to watch that movie and then you'll be like okay you know what you 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 don't even have in fact somebody does not dig Pastor MacArthur at all. They say, you know what? I do not care about John MacArthur in any way, but I went to see this movie. It's actually a very good movie. I encourage people to go and watch it. I'm like, bravo, bravo, bravo. So I thought that was, um, uh, it was, you know, it was awesome. It was, it was, it was uh, very nice. So, uh, you know, Pastor MacArthur um, did some interviews and uh you know they've been everybody's busy right now grace community church doing these interviews okay so one of the interview that he did was on uh jason whitlock okay and this is what he shared okay so i wanna uh share it with you guys so we can you know let's enjoy okay we enjoy all right so um here is uh pastor john MacArthur. And I meant to ask it earlier, but, but I did want to get your thoughts on the feud dispute between the SBC and Rick Warren and the whole egalitarian issue. Do you like the way the SBC has handled this and, and follow up? Are, are, are you? I'm not surprised. I'll state it this way and then you can react. I'm not surprised that a minister could get caught up in his fame and adulation and think that he could reinterpret the Bible. Uh, you know, ministers are people too. And if, if they have too much adulation and fame, that they can make the exact same mistake. And, and so I, I, I see my view as I see what's happening with Rick Warren is just a symptom of what's going on throughout society. Man wants to be God and we've lost all humility. And that's going to be, that is our undoing. Yeah, that's very sound theology. Um, you're absolutely right. So let's just talk about Rick Warren. Um, you know, whatever you are as a as a minister is primarily defined by your view of Scripture. If you understand Scripture as the as the Word of God, if you understand 
that you can't tamper with it, you can't twist it, you can't alter it, or you can't treat it lightly, or you can't manipulate it because it's the holy word of God whom he's exalted equal to his own name. You, you're going to be very, very careful in handling the word of God. In fact, there is a um, seriousness in, in what we do. James said, stop being so many teachers, for theirs is a greater condemnation. When you stand up and say, thus says the Lord, you better not be putting words in God's mouth. And you better not be taking words out of his mouth and twisting and manipulating. What comes across with a guy like Rick Warren or even Andy Stanley, another SBC guy, is they, in the hubris of their own pride, have set themselves above the scripture. That's a frightening thing to me. That's, that's really a terrifying thought. Because in setting yourself above the word of God, you have set yourself above God himself, who, who's exalted his word equal to his own name. So you don't see the submissiveness that should mark a faithful servant. And what's encouraging and discouraging about the SBC issue is it's now fracturing and splitting. And it's splitting because the SBC has some people who want to use Scripture whatever way they would like to use it, and the people who want to be faithful to it. And those two inevitably will split. Uh, that's that's not. There's no common ground. You can't you can't take a person who plays fast and loose with the Bible to manipulate his own ends and somebody who is profoundly devoted to an accurate handling of Scripture and put Pastor them together. Pastor MacArthur, thank you so much uh, for your time. It's been a There you have it. Uh, um, <laughs> um, what's his name made the appearance? um rick warren right like you know <laughs> so pastor MacArthur calls out rick warren <laughs> sliding under stanley in there for all their false teachings and everything and then you know seeing the picture of uh, rick warren with uh, <laughs> sir what's the name sir elton john and everything like they are you know thoroughly compromised thoroughly compromised i thought that was funny so, but, you know, um, Rick Warren is no longer an SBC. Under Stanley, used to be in the SBC, but he's not in the SBC. In case, you know, we know the reporters, they'll be out there like, oh, you said Rick Warren is an SBC. No, not anymore. Under Stanley, not anymore. So I thought that was kind of like, <laughs> I thought that was kind of like funny and very, uh, um, very interesting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I just like, yeah, you know, yeah. Understand, like, no, not anymore. Um, uh, in the SBC, and you better go watch the movie, okay? Yeah, no spoilers, but for this one, understand, is in the movie, <laughs> so you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Understand, is in the movie. You don't want to miss it. I thought, yeah, <laughs> understand, they made their appearance. You sure did. <laughs> when I saw, I'm like, oh, and we see you. <laughs> We see you, we see you. So like, yeah, you know, definitely be sure to uh, <laughs> go check Andy in there. Now, the other thing also that to, you know, I want people to see uh, the movie, you know, we all hear Romans 13, Romans 13, Romans 13, right? This movie is showing you in action what Romans 13 looks like. Not just like, you know, <laughs> telling stories in the schoolyard, like real uh real stuff that actually took place that you can actually be able kind of like be happy like you know what we are christians okay we are christians and it's something like you know we shouldn't shy away from those things you know like god is on our side okay god is on our side and some of these things i think they just happened to us because lack of faith to me is what i'm saying is what i'm saying and this was also to me, after seeing how, you know, how Pastor MacArthur was canceled, some churches were canceled, watching the movie, I'm actually glad that they actually um, kind of like shut down their church. I'm seeing that now, because their church was closed, and this is like John MacArthur, it's, um, it's a big news, right? Because it was kind of like on, the, on a bigger stage. So if that church is closed, everybody knows. If that church is open, everybody knows, right? It's kind of like that's what God used as a vehicle, okay? 
there were churches that were open that that, that, nev that never closed down. Like, you know, Jeff Deben never closed down his apologia. But, you know, not everybody knows Jeff Deben. But trust and believe there's people out there in the corner, in the middle of nowhere, they know who John MacArthur is. So using him in that way, to me, how I see God's providence is actually good. So much so that because things happen that way after the shutdown, uh, we are able to see, to hear, and all the glory goes to, uh, goes to God more so than if they had remained open. So I'm seeing that God used the shutdown to, to, to expose everything, to show everything. Because of the shutdown, we know other churches never opened. It separated, you know, the wheat and tares for now, so to speak, right? Um, there's people who left, okay, there's people who left the Grace Community Church and there's people who've joined Grace Community Church. So much so, like according to Pastor MacArthur, for 53 years, he's never seen that church grow to this level out of 53 years after these lockdowns, after this COVID. Tell me God is not good. Not only that, and this is the same testimony that uh, Jeff Debin also shared at their church. Okay, so to me, I'm like, you know what? Because those things happen, it even uh, right now, you know, you know, if you go to a church, a solid church, you know, right now, if if tomorrow they say to shut down, you 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 you're not gonna guess. You know that your pastor is going to open that church, and you're not gonna second guess him because he's gonna do it. And you also know that your pastor is going to waver or you're not sure. There isn't this issue like, ah, I'm not sure whatsoever. Those are the three things. Either you know outright he's going to close or you know he's not going to close or you know he's going to waver. That's just about it. So you are able to see, to assess like, okay, you know, what is my responsibility? If my pastor is going to open the church, I need to go and show up. And... I thought that was a very good, uh, this movie displayed that issue. I thought that was very, very nice. And the other thing also, um, this idea of, uh, you know, also to me, you know, we know there's always these infights that goes on even amongst pastors, whatever, reform church. I'm like, you know what? Those things, they need to stop immediately. Why? Because it, as long as it's not affecting doctrine, as long as it's not talking about, uh, you know, um, infringing upon the gospel, as a pastor, you don't have time for that issue. I'm sorry. You do not have the time. If somebody else wants to be, okay, you know what, uh, this person or whatever is Christian nationalist, okay, fine. That's not specific. Other people want to be Christian nationalists. Other people, they don't want. There's no need to be calling out names. There's no need to be separated. There's no need for you to be, I'm going to build my, my, my church or my platform standing on a ban of Christian nationalism. That is nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. Other people are going to be cultivating on one end. Leave them alone. Other people cultivating on the other end. Leave them alone. We're going to meet in the middle. In the end. You know, it says, you know, Jesus is going to separate the uh, the goat and the sheep. For now, to be arguing in these frivolous things, I think it's, uh, uh, we're too busy in those things that we we, we miss the boat. Because when they show the movie, just the history of it, you'll be like, oh, what, what happened? Did we what? Why were we shutting down? You actually, uh, as a Christian, if you know your scriptures, you'll be like, wow, this is kind of like embarrassing, so to speak. So I do believe because those things happen, I do see that um, Lord showing, you know what I mean? Showing the church that um, that's, you know, like we shouldn't be like that. We should not find ourselves in those situations. So to me, I'm very pleased that movie uh they put that movie out okay so here's another nugget also from pastor macarthur okay so uh here we go uh you know same doing rounds being interviewed here we go 
it fits just about everything in my life. But as I look at the details put together in the movie, I am reminded again of God's providence. All kinds of things over which we had zero control. Things like, uh, for example, the lawyers, our attorneys, said that they believe we had a 1% chance to win. 99% chance they're going to lose. And they were our attorneys. And, and they were in court for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so they were coming to me saying, can, can you give a little bit? Because we don't think this thing is possible. But the hand of the Lord was mighty in, in that sense because we, had, we were triumphant to the degree. And this is shocking. They wanted to shut us down. When we said to them, we're tired of being postponed and postponed and postponed. So let's have a real trial. And we'll depose all the health officials. We'll depose the supervisors, the political leaders of the city, county. And we'll get the truth. 24 hours later, they said, we're done. We're out. So fearful of the truth. The truth about COVID, the truth about the lockdowns, the truth about masks, the truth about everything. We knew what all the questions were, and we wanted to depose them. And we were going to depose Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. And um, the panic was so severe that they paid the entire legal bill, $3.5 million. And on top of that, they gave Grace Church a permanent injunction that the county can never, ever again in the future come against Grace Church. I mean, they gave up everything to protect themselves from the truth. So your reflections are, they'll give up a lot to protect themselves from the truth, so your job was to be faithful. Exactly, and what, what you see, and this is something you try to, to teach believers, you can work to manipulate circumstances, you can work to manipulate people, or you can do what is right, honest, pure, good, holy, all those virtuous things, and then let God orchestrate the ends. Um, this is another illustration. I mean, how do we win against the county of LA, the health department in LA, the state of California, the governor of California? Um, and how do we win without a trial? How do we win? How do they roll over and give us everything we ever wanted? Uh, that, is a, that is a mighty work of God. And uh, so I, again, when I look at the whole scenario for one year, two years, and into three years, I, I, I see the hand of God everywhere. And that film pulls that all together uh, because obviously it covers a couple of years of this issue. Um, and so it condenses all the, the marvelous things that the Lord did. And there's some other characters that come into it, obviously James Coates and Tim Stevens, who are both master seminary guys. Um, and then you, you link it up with church history, which is what the film does. And again, so many lessons to be learned from history. And again, the major lesson is that God takes care of his church. Amen. There you go. Yes, absolutely. God takes care of his church. And the fact that uh, even the, 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 the Los Angeles government, they've pretty much just like, even in the future, they can never touch Grace Community Church. <laughs> even in the future, they can never touch Grace Community Church. Where are you going to get that from? Okay, immunity for the future. <laughs> so that's just how God works. He will do the impossible things that you wouldn't even think or imagine, right? That's how God works. So to me, I'm looking at all those things. I'm like, you know what? This was of God. So imagine if they had opened. You see what I'm saying? And because all those things happened after being shut down on all these things, the Lord just showed them like, you know, he can just do exceedingly and abundantly. So this to me, the other thing that I'm, 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 I'm happy about this situation is like, you know what? Uh, almost kind of like, you know, you know, Pastor MacArthur is at his sunset years, right? Kind of like, okay, you know what? I'm going to leave this church. But whatever happens, the government is not going to touch them. So it's up to these elders at this church to remain faithful. Because you're not worried about Governor Nusama or another governor who's going to come in. Because just like, okay, no, you know, we can't go there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You cannot touch Grace Community Church. And now because they, they have that particular precedent, you see, other people, you know, because, uh, you know, because you, know, you have all these cases, right? So other judges will be like, e, you know, we or, or other counties, be, you know, we don't want to uh, pay three point whatever, five million lose whatever happened to MacArthur. Like, oh, no just leave them alone, you know, we're just going to mind our business, things like that, because God is able to do those things, like even government knows some has to bow knee, you know what I'm saying, California government is not above God, let alone the United States for that matter, okay, so those are the things that God does, like what, in the future, like what is that, you know, <laughs> so, um, so to me, just looking at those things, and how all this move 
uh, you know, how the movie put everything together. I was just like, you know what? Oh, it's cool to be a Christian. It's cool to be a Christian. So, I mean, if you, I, I, I know, you know, some people are so far away from where the movie theater is going to be. Whenever this movie comes, the, just watch it, you know? Uh, pastors out there, they definitely watch it. You know what I'm saying? So like this myth, the stories that have been promoted, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Joe MacArthur shut down his church. Ah, Joe MacArthur, this whatsoever. You watch that movie, you'll be like, you know, you'll be like, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. So I do, they did a very good um, job. And we'll be able to ask, like, you know, how did they come up with this story or the behind the, the technical things? Okay. The, the other stuff in there, like, okay, how they were making the sausage from the director on um, on Monday. Yes, it's cool to be a Christian. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Go Christians. Okay, and this is what Pastor MacArthur is now saying to everybody. Here we go tell you that the essential church movie will premiere in theaters on july 28th nothing like this has been done before every pastor and church goer needs to see this movie it's an unforgettable dramatic reminder of the church's responsibility to stand courageously and faithfully for christ against all enemies to find a theater near you Go to EssentialChurchMovie.com. That's EssentialChurchMovie.com. Okay. So that is, uh, you know, Pastor MacArthur out there. You're going to say no to Pastor MacArthur, not to go watch the movie? <laughs> so, like, yeah, if you are to uh, bury yourself to definitely go and watch the movie, you know, this idea like ah uh, you know ah uh, this happened like no at this point it's just like okay things happen uh they shouldn't have happened that way but they happened that way but god was able to use those things to accomplish so many things and so many people have come to christ so many people have donned the church doors because of all those situations and circumstances you know like as they say all things work together for uh for good, right? For those who love God and accord according to his purpose. So it was just even a, another legacy, beautiful reminder of how faithful um, Pastor MacArthur has been for years, for 53 years. And it's very, um, one other thing that, you know, they, they were sharing, right? Um, was that, you know, he's preached the entire scriptures, right? Like, you know, the, the New Testament verse by verse. So almost kind of like, okay, so have you ever preached about, you know, this, whatever, Romans 13, stuff like that? Just like, oh, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> and these people are like, okay, we need to dig to find out well, whatever, everything you said. It's, it's the same things. Nothing has changed. So the same teaching that he was teaching ever since he went to Grace Community Church and what he's teaching now, it's just the same, you know? It's just like, I want to be faithful to the text. I just want to preach the word of God and God will take care of the rest. And because he's lived like that for his life and when all these things are happening, he's just, you know, it's to him, it's just another day. Because just like, no, he's seen God wake things throughout his life faithfully throughout the ministry. So he has learned to be faithful. He has learned to trust God. And I thought that was kind of like a very beautiful, awesome, good thing, especially for, you know, for young men, you know, you have like young pastors, they have zeal, you know, they have zeal. They want to do everything, all this thing, which is a good thing, but it's almost like, you know, uh, wait, your time will come. Just be faithful. Take care of the, the, the important things that God has entrusted to you and all these things. Will, will, will come to bear, you know? Just be steadfast, exactly. Just be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So, and then the other thing that kind of like, even when I watched the movie, what, it, what actually reminded me was like, you know what? 
there's wisdom for for some of these people who've been doing this for quite some time okay i remember specifically um i remembered um Matt Driscoll. Uh, I had, you know, I listened to something like, you know, Matt Driscoll. I wasn't even a Christian at that time. I wasn't even a believer. You know, he's preaching, he's teaching. I was like, what type of a pastor talks like that? Because I found it to be strange. Like, wow, you know, he's just so cavalier about, you know, his teaching, whatever, the Song of Solomon and everything. I'm like, okay, this okay, you know. I go, oh, no, you know, he's reformed. He's, you know, this macho man, masculine, the whole nine yards, right? Big shake, Mazil, everything going for him. I was just like, oh, all right, you know. And he was actually even, you know, you know, Pastor MacArthur, Phil Johnson was just like, this is not how you, um, this is not how you use this text. This is not how you do things. And people are like, oh, no, you guys are just dinosaurs. Okay. You guys are just dinosaurs. You know, you're jealous of this young up and coming. I know he's going to take over type mentality thing. Okay. All right. Those guys, they just carried on the same things that they were doing 40, 50 years ago. And what happened to Mark Driscoll, right? Everything, you know, came tumbling down right before his eyes. Now he's trying to build bad, but he's not what he used to be. But there were people who said things even then. And when they were saying, they will look like you guys are dinosaurs, you know? So it kind of like, even when I was watching that, I'm like, you know what? Faithfulness, it matters in ministry. No matter how big your ministry is or how small your ministry is, like, you know, just faithfulness. Yeah. You know? And like we say, understand they made their appearance in there. Like, you know, when you look, I'm like, man, it's kind of like you just shake your head. like, <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> sit down and keep quiet you know they went from you type thing you know so those are yes exactly yeah these are the things the beginning of uh wisdom is the fear of god exactly so it, it almost kind of like reminded me that thing you know like no there's people who've seen things uh, other people might not see the same things that you're saying but god is good god is faithful as long as you're faithful in what you're doing god is going to open doors for you god is going to vindicate you and even in, in, in this point, like how churches were shut down, right? You know what? Jeff Deben never shut down his church, okay? And you know what, that, what he did? He doesn't tout that he never shut down his church. And he said, the people who've closed our ch the churches, they're still our brothers. We're going to remain open and they remain open. And he doesn't talk about it. It's, he, you know, he's just doing whatever he's doing and he's carrying on, you see? People who know, they just know, okay, this young man never shut down his church. Okay? Besides, his mentor has closed down the church. Some of them were for uh, the churches to be shut down. But he's not building his ministry on like, oh, you know what? I never, these people, oh, you know, MacArthur shut down this church. Oh, these people shut down the church. Oh, mine was open. He doesn't do that. He's just doing his ministry and he's carrying on. He's young. People see. You see what I'm saying? People see, they understand those things. So, even just seeing that, that, just the contrast, like, you know, there's other young men who are in the ministry. They're just grinding, minding their own business. They're just being faithful. Then you have other young, they they want the whole world to know that they are the ones. You see what I'm saying? Quote, unquote, they're going to be the ones who are going to take down John MacArthur. Okay? Like, oh, he did this. It's just like, just like, you know, sit down, you know, sit down, that type of thing. So to me, it, it, or it just opened you know, those avenues, just like, you know, looking like, okay, you know what? It's time to assess, take some inventory, you know? It's not easy to be a pastor. Even just this idea of honoring your pastor, loving your congregation, loving your pastor, things like that, it matters. And to me, just watching that movie, I think if if people used to love each other, Grace Community Church, after this movie, it's like their love has just gone to another level. And they love their pastor, for sure. I think now it's just to 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 another level, okay? Now it's just gone to another level. And I was so happy to see that, that Pastor MacArthur was able to experience that, like, you know, receiving those flowers while he still can and enjoying that together with his elders, together with his church. That was nice. And I did like the idea, like, yeah, you know what? 
that's good that they mind their own business over there you know fine like you know we are curious we want to know what's going on over there i get it but they they are they are trying every time every day whatever they're doing they want to be faithful and the lord is bringing fruit to their ministry is showing so if you want to be successful you must just do what whatever the lord is going to bring to you but you don't want to quote unquote destroy someone else's ministry so that you should build your own ministry okay speak bad about other people's ministry kind of like poaching people like oh you know what don't go over there don't be supporting those guys you know what i'm saying he's, he's a loser oh he believes in loser theology he's this whatever come over here like no you know th that's not how you build ministry you just be faithful whatever whatever he's doing let god deal with him if he's compromised on the scriptures fair game you can call that out so to me that's just what i was so happy about seeing that uh into fruit you know coming to bear you know what i mean them being able to see um the fruit of that particular ministry i thought that was nice and awesome it was good i was so pleased to hear about that and you know whatever there was some you know some i don't know i think there were some traitors in there some judases and everything you know what i mean god just took care of them you know just like that i'm like hey I love it. So that's so why I want you guys to go see the movie. If especially if you've been keeping up with our famous uh, reporter lady out there, you know, you'll be able to put one and two together when you watch the movie. Like, oh, we see you. Like, no, man, <laughs> it failed miserably. It didn't work, and it can never work. So I was happy about that. One thing for sure, I was happy about that. Eric, I can't wait for you to watch the movie. You know, you'll be. You'll be so uh, happy about it. it. Was it was nice? So th those are the things that to me, they they definitely stood out. The production was well done. Uh, yeah, well, it, it came together real good. The story, how it was told, very nice. You know, uh, Pastor James Scott in Canada was featured. Uh, Stephen in, in Canada was featured, and all these people actually what they all uh, went to uh, the masters. A seminary right so this is kind of like these are like the the timothy's that macarthur has planted seeds long time ago and now they have their own ministries and this is exactly what's happening right you know like you have the students who are being arrested you know and i felt like wow this is so nice so yeah i think pastor macarthur is is pleased with the movie himself like you know it's just kind of like that issue like okay you know what um he'll he'll die a happy man okay he'll die a happy man that's one thing for sure he'll die a happy man yeah so i thought that was uh very interesting and to be honest with you to me i was even kind of like you know what well like what you shared eric like oh you wonder whatever rc is from I'm like you know what i think god god is god you know i'm like you know what rc is gone all these things are happening you know he's been long gone and i remember rc did platform uh at the rigonia um ravi zacharias okay ravi zacharias he did platform him quite quite a bit and it was actually you know same thing john MacArthur was like i don't understand why you know uh about ravi zacharias you know this guy you know is too much into philosophy this that and, and whatever but you know uh, rc had a, a, a relationship with the Rav, he platformed him and everything. But those guys saw something about Rav. It was just like, no, man, you know? So they never uh, endorsed his ministry in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, RC was gone before Ravi, and the stuff about Ravi came about RC when he was already gone. And most of the stuff about Ravi came out while kind of like he died, right? I didn't believe the stuff myself. I was like, what, Ravi? You know? But look, he had that, you know, like worldwide ministry. For 40 years, apologetics ministry, Australia, you have Kenya and Africa, all these places. But because he, he did he did not finish well, do you even hear about Ravi Zachariah ministry today? You see what I'm saying? And then I was like, hmm, do you know who said something about that ministry when he was the, the you know, the bells and whistles and everything? Pastor Makath. Pastor Makath. And where is Pastor MacArthur now? So when I, you know, I remembered that, I remembered Mark Driscoll, then I'm like, okay, all these youngsters who are saying all this, whatever today, I'm like, sit down. <laughs>
it will not end well with you. There's people who've done the same thing and it didn't end well for them, you know. But yeah, it's just like honor to whom honor is due. So you guys make a plan. Once it's in your theaters, definitely watch the movie. Watch the movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ravi fooled me too. I was just like, no, but it was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but there were people who were saying things. It was just like, ah, oh, Ravi, no, I think this one check. No, oh, man. You know, yeah, it's discernment, wisdom. People who've been faithful, they've seen things from the far. You know, seeing things from the far. Now, the stuff is just like, ah, oh, okay, we see, we see. So, so to me, even, you know, whatever people want to cancel Pastor MacArthur, but just looking at the, how faithful he's been in his ministry, you know, what about a, a benefit of a doubt? How about that? At least, hasn't he earned it? Man, you know how it is, right? These days where we are at. But, you know, I'm so excited that uh, the movie's out. Make sure you buy tickets. Invite people to go watch the movie. It has everything there, you know, for Christians, for non-believers. It's a good movie to watch with church members, church family, your family, anybody. It's a very, very good movie, you know. Spread the word out because there's no marketing for the movie. It's just by word of the mouth. So if you are on social media, uh, you know, tweet the movie, you know, Essential Church. Tweet it, share it, post it on Facebook anywhere just put the weight out they have um you know i have the links in the description you can clip those uh those links and just share it because they're straight from grace um grace uh productions so be sure to share those things yes ladies and gentlemen so on monday be back here so we'll be able to ask the director of the movie okay so we'll be able to ask those questions because he goes to grace community church he's right there okay so he, he knows whatever it is. So we'll be able to ask those questions and then they can tell us because the rest of us, we're also just seeing things from the far, right? But yeah, man. So that was my uh, my experience. I definitely recommend the movie. It's a good movie. Even if Pastor MacArthur was not in the movie, it's actually a very good movie. A very good movie. Yeah. If you care about church history, and by the way, Church History Matters. That's a movie that you want to see because it's like that church history right there. You want to see Romans 13 in action? That's there. You want to see the dynamics of 40 elders, faithful elders. It's in there. <laughs> it's all in there. It's all in there. All right, guys, I appreciate you uh, for spending this evening with me. I uh, uh, thank you so much. And I'll let you guys go so you can get ready tomorrow. It's a big day, Lord's Day. And also share the, the stories when you go tomorrow at, at church. Ask people there if they've seen the movie and, you know, put the word out, right? Like, you know, we want to support this movie. It's done by Christians produced by Christians. It's a good story for Christians and it's a beautiful story that shows how mighty our God is. So make sure you definitely plan to go and watch the movie. All right. Thank you guys for spending your evening with me. That is all that I had for you guys today. Stay tuned and more coming this week, Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have Brother Shannon Holiday, the director of the Essential Movie, live right here. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Until next time, remember to be in the now. Good night, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay? I'll tell you that the Essential Church movie will premiere in theaters on July 28th. Nothing like this has been done before. Every pastor and churchgoer needs to see this movie. It's an unforgettable dramatic reminder of the church's responsibility to stand courageously and faithfully for Christ against all enemies.